everyone <laughs> welcome back to another youtube video today's video is going to be all about my equipment so things that i use for filming whether it be youtube video um the photography that i do i if you don't know i have an instagram account called the fashion squirrel and i actually take all of the pictures myself i don't have a photographer i go out on the street and i take them myself I will actually leave a video linked up above on, how, on exactly how that I do that if you're interested, so definitely check that out. We're going to go through cameras, so like my actual camera equipment, lenses, lighting, sound, uh, and any other equipment that I have, which I think is really exciting because I know a lot of you guys are also other YouTubers or bloggers and you are probably curious about these things just like I am. And I also just want to preface this by saying that I am 100% by in no means an expert on camera equipment or <laughs> in any camera's lighting sound way. In general, I did go to school for journalism and I worked at a TV station and I did pick up a few things there so I kind of knew a little bit of what to look for and what the necessary equipment was. This is just kind of what I use and I think that everything that I have is just the basics for what you would need. Obviously, that's a very subjective thing because in theory, anyone could create a video or take photos just with their phone. You really do not need any of this equipment. Uh, this is just if you want to bump up your quality a little bit and just have a little bit more fun with it and to just make your pictures and your videos have a little bit more quality. So I am like very bare bones filming this right now because all of my equipment is here so I don't, I'm using natural lighting, my camera is propped up on books because I want to show you my tripod <laughs> and everything. So um, just bear with me. Okay, so I'm so excited. Uh, I'm so excited about this video. Okay, so to get started, let's start with cameras. So the first camera that I have, I actually keep it in this case. This is just, you know, any old camera case. This was actually given to me. Um, and inside I have my main camera, which is a Canon T3i. <laughs> This is, if you've been on YouTube for a long time, and guys, I have been on YouTube making videos for 10 years, but I've actually been watching YouTube videos since everything started. And back in the day, the Canon T3i was the camera to get. Obviously, there are much newer versions now, but this is kind of a basic camera that has all of the functions that you need. It is a very easy camera to learn on, and in my opinion, it's a great first camera and it is everything you kind of need. So note that this is a, a Canon. Something that I've learned is that early on you almost want to like decide on a, on a brand and kind of stick with it. That way you'll save money because once you get, um, say if you get a Canon base, then you'll need to be getting Canon lenses. You're not necessarily going to put like a Sony lens on a Canon camera unless you want to get like a Sony base. And I could be wrong in that, but that's just what I've learned. If I'm incorrect, let me know in the comments. If I say anything incorrectly, like just please leave it in the comments, but this is what I've learned. So I have two lenses. The main lens that I use is this one here. This is a, it is a 18 to 200 millimeter lens. The aperture is 3.5 to 6.3, and it's also a macro lens. So this I actually got as my first lens because when I actually got this camera right before I traveled abroad to New Zealand in college, so I kind of wanted it, one, for like starting my first YouTube videos, and then two, I wanted a nice camera for when I was studying abroad because I was going to be taking so many landscape pictures and that's what a lens like this is good for is like those very wide um, kind of shots you can zoom in really far you can manual focus and everything pretty good but it's not so great for close-up shots and it's not so because the aperture only goes down to 3.5 you don't really get that blurry background that you're used to with fashion photos so when I started the fashion squirrel that's when I was like, okay, I need to get a lens that is perfect for fashion photos. Like, I'll put up on the screen an example of what I mean, but where the, the, the details of the clothing are in focus and the background is blurry. Mostly for those, like, on-the-street fashion photos, which is mostly what I take. 
So I went to B&H, which I highly, highly recommend going to if you live in New York City or even you can access them online. They're a great resource for everything in this topic and their customer service is incredibly helpful. So I went to B&H and I said, I have a Canon camera and I need a lens and I described everything that I just told you about wanting the blurry background. And they said that this lens is the perfect lens. And since buying this lens, I have also heard the same thing from multiple other people, other people on YouTube, other photographers, just that this is a perfect lens because it's very easy. It gets you that perfect blurry background because it is an, it goes down to a 1.8 aperture, which is nice and low. It's, yeah, so it is a Canon EF 50 millimeter the aperture is 1.8 and this is actually the box that it comes in it's only a hundred and twenty five dollars it's a hundred and twenty five dollars so when you're thinking about most lenses that you can get that really nice kind of effect you would think that they would be 400 plus like thousands of dollars and you can then you do not have to buy that at all. You can get this one that's only $125 and everyone will recommend this to you. So if you do fashion photography or anything that's a little bit more close up or something that you just want that nice uh, like blurred effect, this is a little lens for you. And by the way, I'll leave links to all these things down below if you guys want to check them out um, just to make sure that you know, you're know you're searching for the exact one that I'm talking about here. All right. Now, inside of here is something very important, and that is, I keep like in the top zipper pouch, this little remote. And this is maybe 10 or $14, like I think it's 10 or 12, no more than $14. But it's this tiny little Canon remote that looks like this. It's battery operated. All it is is just one button right in the center here. and. When I'm out on the street taking my fashion photos, I put this camera on a tripod and I hit this button from far away. Well, I line it up first and everything. Again, um, reference that video that I was talking about. I'll leave a link down below as well to kind of go more in depth about this. But you can like easily take photos of yourself with this little remote. And it makes it so easy, it's all you need. Um, literally $10 and it makes your life so much easier. And then the next camera that I use is the camera that I'm filming on. Sorry, I can't show it to you in person, but I will put up a picture on the screen of what it looks like. And that is the Canon G7X. And you probably heard about this camera before. Everyone, literally everyone on YouTube has this camera. It's a really great vlogging camera because one, it has the flip up screen so you can see yourself and line everything up um, correctly. It's easy for filming yourself. And then two, because it automatically focuses when you're filming. So you like a touch and go, like plug it, like turn it on, record and go sort of a camera. And you can easily hold it, take it around. You really do not have to do much. It's good quality as well. And I think an overall great camera. So I'd say on the one hand, have your camera that is your nice camera that has your lenses so that you can do photography. And then on the other hand, have your vlogging camera that's really makes filming very easy. On that same note, let's talk about tripods. And this is my tripod. It is this is like <laughs> one of my favorite things that I own. I cannot tell you how much this has made a difference in my life. <laughs> and this is the tripod that I take everywhere with me when I take my Instagram photos. And it's seen all the streets of New York. It has seen snow, it's seen rain. This thing is sturdy. And that's kind of the thing is, all you need is just one basic tripod. Just one basic tripod that is going to be your tripod. You do not need to spend a lot of money on it. Mine is Silk U550. I was randomly given this um, by, my by my mom. Like, this was just one that I think my family just kind of had and they're like, sure, take it. Like, they're not using it. So yeah, so I have this one. The important thing to look for when you're looking for a tripod is to make sure that it extends very high. So this one, you can see the bottom here, it extends pretty far and then it even extends again. 
and you can do that for all three legs and then at the top you can twist it and it even goes up here so it can get pretty tall so um that way if you are doing fashion photos you can get that you can get like your full outfit in the frame because it definitely needs to be tall enough for that and then the second feature that i think is important to look for is if you are doing fashion photos is to make sure that this top part here where your camera sits on can turn like this because what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to take portrait photos and i can't tell you how many tripods do not have that feature and people don't even realize it but this is incredibly important because all of the photos as fashion um you know instagrammers that we want to be posting are going to be that up and down portrait portrait layout because that's going to take a like the most amount of screen on someone's phone so they'll see the biggest picture which is the best like quality that you want so when shooting fashion photography always shoot in portrait and if you're going to be taking pictures yourself make sure that your tripod can do that <laughs> because I'll just show you. So say you're out in the street, you put your camera, you mount it on top of your uh, tripod, you've got your remote ready to go. What you're going to do is, your camera's going to tip like this. And another reason why I love this Canon T3i is because the display actually comes out like this. So let me just turn my camera on so that you can see. So you can actually, one, from this angle, see, line it up what you want your background to be. And then once you line it up, all you do is just twist this, whoops, the other way, twist this around, run over there, take your remote, press the button, do a couple poses, come back, look, see if you like the photos, maybe shift next time, move a little bit over, and there you go. Guys, I feel like I'm telling you all of my secrets today. Like I'm just, these are all of the things that I do behind the scenes. <laughs> all right, so you just saw my main tripod and now I wanna talk about two other tripods that I have that make my life very easy. One of them is this little guy. So this is just exactly what it looks like. It's a mini tripod. And I love this because I typically put this on the bottom of my Canon G7X and this is what I hold when I'm vlogging, basically. Um, like if I'm ever talking to the camera like this, I'm probably holding this just because it makes it easier and a little bit more stable than holding the camera actually itself. So yeah, I just plug this in. Um, oh, I screw it in on the bottom of the camera and I hold this. Uh, something that I, I actually might switch to is one of those tripods that actually kind of have the bendy legs because you can like hook those onto pretty much anything and film anywhere. You can hook them onto a bench, you could hook it onto like a railing or something and you can get like really cool shots with that so I might get one of those soon. But for now this one is perfect and easy. And then this is a little bit less necessary this is a very serious tripod this is from b h it's called impact and this is a tripod with a different type of um, top to it here so the reason why i have this is because of two reasons one this uh type of like adapter i guess here i don't know what you would call this is connects to my ring light and also it has all of these like clips here basically and this actually can bend and you can clip things to it so yeah I'd say that this is just a different type that's kind of hard for me to explain but let me show you what exactly I use with it so also from impact I have this uh, it's uh, impact lighting and accessories basically what it is is this diffuser so it's in this but ooh. so i don't know if i can show you how big this actually is but basically yeah it's a diffuser so what that's meant to do is um like either if there's a lot of light here diffusing that light or even bouncing off the light from this direction so as you can see right now i have a lot of light coming in from here because i have a window right here and this side of my face is more shadowed because obviously there's no window on this side of my room 
but if I were to put one of these reflectors on it, it would then shine, in theory, that light on my face. So I have this, basically this is like a, uh, a reflector, and I can zip this over this big circle, and it has a couple different sides. So it has this silver side, and then it has this gold side. It has two different options for gold. One of them is like, this one is a silver with gold like zigzags on it. And then inside, it even has another option, which is just straight gold gold. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. I'm sure that one of them just gives you more um, like a golden light, maybe like a golden hour glow. And then the other one is just typical light. But it is good to have one of these, especially once you know you get more into photography, especially when we're talking about Photogra uh, photographing specific objects, whether it's reflecting uh, shadows on a person's face or say if it's like food photography or something, it's also great to have a diffuser, pretty much whatever it is. Obviously it's not necessary, but if you want your stuff to look more professional, it is something that is um, you know, essential to have. All right, now on the note of lighting, let's take a look at my ring light. <laughs> Ooh, so, I have this one here. I had searched for a long time on the internet, guys, for the best ring light, and I determined that this is by far the best option. So this is from Studio Essentials. I purchased it from B&H, and this is just the case that it comes in. Ooh. But basically, this is the actual ring light itself. So this I would connect to that tripod that I just showed you with the different sort of adapter in the top. Basically put that down and then just screw it on. And what I like about this one is the fact that you can make the light not only um, dimmer and brighter, so you can make it like a brighter light or you can, you can dim the light, but you can also change the warmth. So on the back here, when this is plugged in, you can see on the screen a number, and that just kind of shows you like how warm or how cool it is. So sometimes in some lighting, um, you're going to want to um, make the lighting that you're projecting on someone be a little bit more cool or a little bit more warm depending on the environment that you're in. So for example, if I'm shooting in here in my room at nighttime, and I have like all of my uh, artificial lights are very warm and it's making my room look really yellowy, I would probably turn this to more of a cool tone light, that way to just like balance some of that out. So that's why I really like this, but not only because of that, but because of some other really great features that it has. <laughs> For example, it has this uh, option, which is to film yourself. So, guys, I actually <laughs> I made my first TikTok video, so head over to my TikTok and follow me there. <laughs> but basically, I you put my phone in this little phone holder, and you can hook this up to a tripod. So, I think that's really great to have. Or even if you want to forego ha like buying a nice camera at all, and you still want to take fashion photos of yourself, like by yourself without a photographer, you can totally just get a tripod and get one of these and just put it on self timer and take it with your phone. That's something you can absolutely do. What I do is I use it for um, for making TikTok videos or if I were to do an Instagram story or maybe an IGTV or something, then I would use this. But it does come with one of these, which is what I really like. And then it also comes with a mirror. So it comes with a mirror. This is like a pretty typical makeup mirror. It has both sides. It has the one that's more zoomed in and then it has the one that's further away. So you can, you know, get up close with your eye makeup and everything. And what I like about this ring light is that it has an insert here so you can um, put your camera here. And then if you want, it also has an insert at the top here so you can put your uh, your your mirror in there so that you can make makeup videos so or you can flip it either way around whatever you want to do but how cool is that like you can it's just oh guys it is just perfect I think that this is the perfect ring light I did a lot of research 
and I think that ooh, the additional features that it has just for like the warmth and the coolness and the dimming and the fact that you can put your phone in it you can put a camera in it and you can also have the option of doing the mirror I mean I just what is better honestly what is better Next in the category of lighting is this little guy, and you might have seen this before, I think like YouTubers like Casey Neistat and those kind of made these popular, but this is the Aperture AL MX Lighting Up light, <laughs> and I'll leave the specifics um, linked down below, but basically the purpose is just to just give you a little bit of extra light where you need it, so say right now if uh, instead of, you know, maybe using my diffuser or something to get some light over here. I could prop this up on a tripod. It also comes with this uh, little adapter thing here, so you could even put this on top of another camera or on any tripod just to give some extra light. You can also balance this on anything. I can just put it on my table here and, you know, you're good to go. But what's great about it is that this little guy is very powerful. So you can see that it's very bright and you can also change again the dimness of it so if it's brighter or less bright and then also the warmth like the tone of it so if you want to be more warm more like yellowy tones or more cool such as um you know more of those blue tones so so right now see we can make it brighter or we can make it a little bit more dim and then if I flip this switch here, we can make it more warm. So see, this is going really warm. Or we can make it more cool. So this is getting really cool. So this, it is getting really cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think one of these is just awesome to have. And also, it's you don't need to plug it into anything. You can literally just take it, go, use it wherever you want. Um, if you're like someone who likes taking pictures of food at restaurants, I mean, you might look a little bit crazy, but sometimes it's really hard to get the lighting right in restaurants. If you're trying to pick, take a picture of your plate of food, the quality is just not going to be good because it's very dark in restaurants. So, like, something like this behind, like, a piece of paper or something could really help out. And then, and this is, like, a totally not necessary lighting thing at all, but I just wanted to show you guys fairy lights. You guys know what fairy lights are. Basically, they're very, very tiny lights. So sometimes it just adds interest to a photo or interest to a background. If I were to put these up, say for example, on my headboard, it would just add a little bit of depth and some um, bokeh coming from, you know, the lights in the background. If you're doing flat lays, it's really cute to just kind of, you know, put the fairy lights kind of everywhere on top of the products that you're showing. And I also, you know, I think you guys have probably all seen this, but you can do some really cool things with the photography with uh, fairy lights. So for example, I took this photo um, in Dumbo and you can see that there, yeah, you get that really cool bokeh effect. I think these are just a really great prop to have. I have fairy lights on my garment rack, which is just great for, you know, all of my fashion videos. And I just think that they just add a little bit of like, think, a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of interest and a great prop to just kind of have. Okay, sound. So in terms of sound, I could definitely, this is an area that I need to invest more in because I just rely on the sound that the, the microphone that I get from whatever camera I'm using. But if you want to bump up your sound and make your sound quality a little bit better, you want to either get a boom mic or a lab mic. A boom mic is a mic that's basically going to come in like this and it's going to be out of the frame but it's close to you and that's going to pick up the sound. A lav mic is a mic that uh, you would actually have like a mic pack on your back or something hidden somewhere in your clothes and you would like hook it to your shirt or something and you know cover it with your hair or whatever. I have only a boom mic and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. This one actually plugs in great to my Canon camera that I showed and yeah, it's very easy to use and I think that the quality is good. I'm probably going to be investing in a lav mic, so when I do, I'll let you guys know which one that I get if you're interested. Um, but for now, I really do like this one. And this fuzzy thing on it, I actually learned it's called the dead cat, which I think is so weird but kind of funny too. Basically, it's not... Oh no. <laughs> Hang on, hold up. Basically, this is what the camera typically looks like. It is a road camera, 
And this is a really good starter mic. This is a pretty typical mic that I would say a lot of people kind of at least have. Um, the point of the dead cat is only to be used when you are outside and it is windy because it's, if you've ever heard a video of someone talking and it's like, and it's super windy and you can't even hear what they're saying, that's, you know, that just happens. But if they had one of these on it, then that would get rid of some of that sound. So yeah, the dead cat is great to have and it comes with the mic. So, so yeah. <laughs> Next, I'm just going to show you some guys something that's just fun. I do not use this all the time, but I splurged on this randomly one year when I got my tax return. And do I regret it? Kind of. It is a drone. <laughs> and I have the DJI Mavic Air. And I am so mad. I got this and I think, yeah, I definitely got this in spring of 2018. And I had been looking at drones for months. And right as I was looking at them it was when, when drones kind of started to really pick up and I had waited only a couple months and it increased the price of the drones like all of the DJI drones just increased by at least $200 so although I was looking at the DJI Mavic Pro just like the main one I ended up going with the Air because it was a little bit less expensive but it is still very good I wouldn't recommend getting one of these if you live in New York City and you never leave because you can't use them. It is basically completely illegal to use a drone in New York City just because it's very densely populated and people don't like something just flying over their head. Um, and also there's a lot of government buildings and things around too and yeah, I think drones can be used as weapons so there's just a lot of laws around why you can't, can't use drones. Um, I do live in um, Brooklyn, kind of close to Prospect Park, and I think that I might be able to use it in the park, but again, it's like, I don't know, I was kind of, I had like this, like, these great expectations for this drone, and then I realized that I can't use it in New York, so I kind of regret that, but when I went to Greece, for example, I got this really great footage, it was just beautiful footage of Greece, and just like, the white houses and the ocean and everything and it was just really cool to use it there so if you are like a, a travel vlogger or blogger or anything that is like you definitely I think you could definitely do a drone and you could get some really cool shots and make really cool content with it uh, I just kind of need to figure out how I'm going to do that but it is fun to play with nevertheless um, and when you get a nice one like this that's when you're actually going to get to use the footage and everything and because this can this can go I think like a mile and a half away so it is pretty cool but definitely not necessary all right now moving on to more of the post-production process and the equipment that you need after the filming has already been done so the first thing that you're going to need is an external hard drive because I learned the hard way that you can, unless you have a like amazing laptop with like really good storage, your laptop is not going to be able to hold all of your video files because they are very big files. And I don't know about you guys, but I just have like the plain like MacBook Pro 13 inch, like the old one that like everyone has. And <laughs> I will tell you, it does not hold the the storage you need an external hard drive so the first one that I ever got was this one again I just went to B&H and picked things out they'll help you they're very helpful there and this one so this is only one terabyte this lasted me for about a year making I would say at the time thinking about maybe two videos a month and then I started to make one uh, video a week and that's when I totally lost storage and it was really weird and I was and it was scary. <laughs> so then I went in and I got this one. This is from WD Elements. And let's see. And this one I believe is two terabytes, so it holds twice as much as the last one. So hopefully I'm hoping that this will last me two years. I think I've had this one for about a year, so it should last me about another year, hoping. The more storage space you're going to get, the more storage space you, the more you're going to be paying basically. So it's kind of up to you on, you know, what you think you're going to be doing for the next year, I guess. And 
Also, you want to make sure that you have one that's compatible for whatever system you're using. So I have an Apple computer, so I get a hard, I got a hard drive that's compatible with a Mac. If you use a PC, you need a um, hard drive that's compatible with a PC, so make sure that you check that first. And there are some that are compatible with both, in which case you, I think, need to get it uh, formatted for the right computer. I think this one actually might have been formatted for a PC or it could be formatted for both, I don't remember. But I do remember that before I left the NH that day, they said to walk over to the um, like the help center and the people there basically just plugged it in and really quickly formatted it to a Mac for me and it was super easy. So. If you can go into B&H, just talk to them and they'll help you figure it out. Um, but if not, if you're buying online, just make sure that you get one that's compatible for whatever type of system that you have. All right, and then editing software. So for me, in my mind, there are two main editing software systems that you should be deciding between, and iMovie is not one of them. You can use iMovie if you want, but it's just, ugh, it, that's just... It's so basic, there's so much more that you can be doing. Okay, so if it were up to me and I had all of the funds in the world, I would be using Adobe Premiere Pro because that's what I learned to edit on and I think that that's a pretty standard industry editing software. Besides Avid, that's like people who literally make movies and stuff, so like we do not need to use that or talk about that, but that is another system. What I use is Final Cut Pro, and that's available on, like, just in general for Macs, and the reason why I use that is because it's less expensive than Premiere, but I feel like you can get a lot of the same features. So, that is what I use. Um, I will leave a link down below. I it's more, it's less expensive, but you have a lot of features in there that you can use, and it's very easy to use once you get the hang of it. So, um, definitely, like, and you can easily teach yourself. There are like very basic things that you can learn and you can just search on YouTube videos like tutorials and you can really teach yourself and that's what I love about all of this is that you can, you don't need a degree in this, you can just 100% teach yourself how to do all of this from scratch. Um, if you actually like care and are really passionate about it, you can go really far and I just think that that is so amazing. Um, so. So that's the editing software that I use for videos, and then the editing software that I use for my photos is Adobe Lightroom. So Lightroom is, that's like, like real photographers use Lightroom, and you can too. It is very easy to use, honestly. Like, don't go thinking that all these professionals are doing all these crazy things because they are very easy to learn. You do have to pay for it as well as maybe like 60 or $70. I'm not 100% sure because I downloaded it a while ago, but you basically can go through and you can manipulate a lot of parts to the photo a lot more than you can do on your phone. You can even get as specific as like taking one color completely out of a photo. So for me, for example, I don't like the color green to be in a lot of my Instagram photos. So if I'm taking a picture anywhere near like trees or grass, <laughs> I can just completely remove that color from the photo and it is crazy. Just the, the, the nitpicky little things that you can do. If you guys want to ever see me make a video on how I edit my uh, Instagram photos in Lightroom, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make that uh, video in the future. But all right, I think that that is everything in terms of my equipment. Obviously, I use other things in terms of props. For example, like, I love this umbrella because it gives off a really cool light in photos. I also sometimes, when I'm taking photos, uh, my fashion photos on the street, especially in the spring and the summertime, I will, you know, just stop at a bodega on the street and buy, like, flowers for $5 or something, or, like, a little croissant and have it as a prop. Just, like, really kind of get into it and just whatever is your style, whatever makes the most sense for, like, you, just, I don't know, just look into it, figure it out, just kind of always keep an eye open and always be looking for new things. Like, for example, when I'm going around in New York City, I always have one eye open for a background. Like, oh, that spot or that location would be a perfect background for my photos. I'll take a photo of it. I'll save it in like an album on my phone. Um, or just like little things like that. It's like, it's a hobby that we love and I just love getting creative with it and just deciding on new things. And I think 
that this is like this could be a whole other video on its own but I think like all of like the shaming of like people shaming girls of you know being really like specific with these things I think that that is horrible and it is just a hobby we enjoy these things we love these things it's something that you can really get into and learn a lot about and you know become educated on and share that knowledge with other people so I don't you know I think it's all good things I think um but yeah that is another video for another time Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you if you got this far. If you did get this far to the end of the video, let me know in the comments. Leave the word fairy light. Leave the word fairy light in your comments so that I know that you've made it to the end. Um, but thank you guys so much. Definitely don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like and a comment. And also I have an, as I mentioned, my Instagram account, the, uh, the Fashion Squirrel, and I post daily outfit inspiration on there. So definitely check that out as well. And then also I am on TikTok. <laughs> So follow me over there. I have like four followers um, and I would really, really love it if you guys, um, if we could be friends on there as well. So yes, that is it. I hope that you learned something great uh, or have like great takeaways from this video and I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye.